Hi guys, it's nice to be back on YouTube. I have been away for some time. There's been a lot of learning, so there's a lot to share. And in this video, I want to share you, I share with you how we do our remote editing. This is going to be a two part uh, video series. In the first part, in this one, we're going to talk about our file syncing system. So how we get these huge files over the internet to my team and back to me and back to my, to my clients. And in the second one, we're going to talk about the actual workflow. So let's start with the file syncing system. So this same file syncing system and workflow applies to our own content and the content that we do for clients. And this workflow is very good for small teams who want to work remotely or for one man uh, freelancers, maybe like you, who want to start editing other people's footage and you need to get the client's footage in and you get the need to get the end results of the client. And of course this video will help you as well if you are a person who wants to get help uh, with editing. So you want to get, you want to hire a remote editor. And talking about that, there's a, a contact form on our website where you can contact me and uh, I can help you find an editor as well. So you can, I can hook you up with a remote editor working uh, using the same system that we are going to go through in this video. Hi Shirley, Hello. Uh, you are in a Hi. tutorial, do you mind? No, that's all right. Okay, um, so you edit stuff for me. Where are you located right now? Uh, right now I'm staying in the Netherlands. Okay. But usually I'm traveling all over the place. Yeah, so quite often we end up, we are in the same place quite often, but a lot of times we are totally different places around the world. So um, in this video I'm gonna tell people how we get files over the internet to each other so and actually I was thinking that you could edit this very tutorial that I'm going to do so there will be a few files on the drive quickly so just give you a heads up oh all right I'll sync them down <laughs> okay thanks all right good luck how long does it take to transfer about 100 gigabytes of footage that's more or less how much I might need to transfer in a one uh, project Let's talk about my internet. My internet connection is on paper, it is 100 megabits per second down and 10 megabits but, uh, upload. Uh, but that might not actually be the case. Um, let's actually test my internet speed. So now we go to speed uh, speedtest.net, which is a website where you can test your internet speed. And I'm connected to my Wi Fi network. And as you can see, uh, the results are not as good as they are in paper. The up, uh, download speed especially is one tenth of what it's supposed to be. But that is uh, potentially my internet connection. But in this case, it is actually my Wi Fi router that is the bottleneck. If I now connect my Ethernet cable to my computer and then I do the test again, you can see that actually the download speed went up quite a lot. And this is actually important for you to realize that sometimes your internet speed might be slow even though your connection is fast. In my case, it was my Wi-Fi router. I have a bit older router, but if I use my Ethernet cable and then uh, no problem. So with my internet speed, it takes about a bit more than two hours to get 100 gigabytes downloaded. And then if you double your internet speed, of course, it will take uh, half the time. And then upload is much, much slower. It's often that these internet speeds are like faster to download stuff and less, uh, less, uh, less fast on uploading. Uh, the upload will take about 20 hours to get 100 gigabytes up. So when you add those up, uploading and downloading, we can say a rough, a roughly metly, roughly metly? <laughs> estimate that it's roughly 100 gigabytes uh, will take one day to transfer up and down. So for our file syncing system, we need to have certain requirements. The first is obvious. It needs to sync files. So it, it's not enough that it just will send files and send files back. It needs to kind of make sure that everybody has the same file so it syncs them together. Another uh, important thing that is not so obvious in the first place is that the software or the system does not have any bottlenecks. So it means that the fast, the upload and download speeds are pretty much as fast as my internet connection is. And then another requirement is that we need to have some kind of user management in the system. So we cannot, I cannot send my passwords and for example my email and passwords to anyone. I want to be able to create new users and fire old users if needed. And then of course another very important part is that it's reliable. It means that it doesn't create duplicate files, so it doesn't accidentally kind of create the files twice. 
and it doesn't randomly delete files because that has happened as well. And then of course one thing is important that the software itself that we use to kind of sync stuff doesn't crash or it doesn't use high CPU, meaning that it doesn't make your computer slow because it's running on the background, taking a lot of your resources for just for the syncing. And then another uh, requirement is that it needs to be a cloud storage. So it doesn't, it's not enough that, it, uh, that I will just send my files from one computer to another computer. They need to be kind of like a cloud uh, stopping point so that it doesn't matter if I'm the only one who has a computer open, I can still send files. And if my computer is closed, someone can still download files. There are some options that where you can kind of go directly from one computer to the computer. For, for us, it doesn't work. And then another kind of a, like a small requirement, but actually quite important, is that uh, the system needs to work with external hard drives. So I cannot uh, sync my files to the computer's hard drive, because for example, if I'm working on a laptop, I don't have much space there. So I will have an external hard drive where I sync the files to. And then uh, my client uh, needs to be able to input files into my system, and I need to be able to output my uh, done files to the client. And then it needs to be affordable and I would really like if it would have unlimited storage. That's kind of optional because that's kind of hard to get, but those are my requirements. And uh, we have tried along the way quite many systems and I will kind of go through them, which systems we have used and why we don't use them. And it doesn't mean that these systems would not work for you, that just these were systems didn't work for us. And I just want to go through them because it might be that one of these is actually better for you than the system that we are working on. So the first uh, options are these file transfer uh, services, for example, WeTransfer or Massive. And uh, these are really good, they're like simple to use, but the, the problem here is that it's a lack of, uh, there's, there's no syncing, you cannot sync files, you will just only be able to send files. And then there's another option called peer-to-peer -peer, uh, syncing software. Uh, so this uses BitTorrent as the technology and basically takes a connection from, from your computer or another computer or to a cloud of computers and kind of syncs files between computers. And this is in theory, this is very beautiful and very elegant, but in practice, unfortunately, it is very slow depending on your internet service provider. Because for example, here in Finland, our internet service providers actually kind of uh, throttle your uh, BitTorrent uh, traffic. So it can be that these, with my experience is that with these softwares, this download and upload speed could be like 10% of what it was on other software. So there's, a, there's unfortunately a really big um, kind of like a throttle, like a, like a bottleneck there that prevents us from using this. And of course, uh, another thing is that there's no cloud. So you cannot kind of, you need to always have the computers on that you want to sync the files. And there's no backup, of course. If you accidentally remove your files on your computer and it has time to sync it to the other computer, then you don't have any backup where you can kind of uh, uh, come back and May, uh, fix your mistake. And uh, my experience with these is that they sometimes take quite a lot of CPU as well, so it's kind of annoying to kind of use your resources on these uh, softwares. But if you don't have these issues, these are very beautiful because basically this can be free. For example, uh, Sync Thing is one of the softwares, it's open source, and uh, this could be a totally free syncing software if you have a lot of computers that you can have on all the time. So maybe this is a good solution for you. Just wanted you to know. It didn't work for us, but maybe it works for you. And then we go into cloud syncing services. And uh, out of these, let's talk about Dropbox first. Dropbox is like, I've been using it for almost like 10 years now. It's, it's almost perfect, but there's one caveat. You cannot use it with an external hard drive. You always need to use the computer's hard drive to uh, use it. It's unreliable if you use it on an external hard drive. Other than that, it's really nice. So if you have a computer that has a big hard drive and your team members have big hard drives, so you can kind of use that uh, with the, com like you can use Dropbox, this could be a really good option. Uh, then the second option is Google Drive. And uh, Google Drive, just like uh, Dropbox, has a lot of offers, uh, features. It's not only file syncing, a, lo a lot of uh, other file um, options as well. And, uh, but there is one really big problem with Google Drive is that the desktop app sucks. It creates files du duplicates and it uh, crashes and it takes a, lot, uh, takes a lot of CPU. So we were not able to use Google Drive uh, for our purposes, unfortunately, uh, with, with the uh, desktop app. Then another system that we have been using actually for a year now, uh, we only recently switch, switch, switched from this system to a new system. And the, this uh, system that we used for a long time was sync.com. 
and uh, it's it's really good. Uh, other there's few <laughs> problems with it, but it's really good. It's good price and and it's reliable. But if you have a really fast internet, I noticed that that I was able to get much higher download speeds with uh, Google Drive than with Sync.com. Uh, so there's some kind of a limitation there, even though the support on Sync.com site says that there is basically no limitation, but our experience is that there is. But it's just a good system, it just didn't work for us. And then there's a, like a bit of a black horse in this uh, comparison. It's Frame.io. And uh, I have been using Frame.io for many years, but it's kind of a weird uh, solution because it's uh, originally it was just for feedback and kind of working with uh, clients. But now they have started to offer these like file syncing solutions as well. So it could be a kind of a uh, potentially a really good solution. But the thing is that it's very confusing because they have so many offers. You, there's this, uh, even this synchronization so that you can synchronize with, the, with the, uh, your editor, for example, Premiere Pro or uh, Resolve, you can kind of sync you can kind of integrate directly into those software. So that's really nice, but in practice, I basically never use those uh, features. And it's kind of confusing where the files go. They sometimes go to your desktop and sometimes they go to a syncing folder. Like it's it's kind of confusing. And the other thing is that they, they have a very limited storage. So there's very small storage that you can use, or then you need to pay a lot of stuff, a lot of money for them. So. I'm keeping my eye on the Frame.io uh, offer, like Frame.io service, because it could potentially be a good one. But right now it's too expensive and too, too confusing. So those are the systems that we have used in the past, but we currently don't use. So what is actually our current system? And it is a combination of two services. The first is Google Drive. And the second one is an open source software called, called Free file sync. Uh, Google Drive, as I said, it's packed with uh, features. It's a really good software. And uh, you can use Google Drive for 20 US dollars to get two terabytes of cloud storage. But actually there's a uh, bit better option that is not obvious. And uh, we actually use the so-called Google, uh, Google Suite, so G Suite uh, business uh, solution. And that is, uh, that is like everything. It's like the email, you get your custom domain with email, you get a remote edit, uh, well, no, remote meetings, you get a calendar, you get uh, like total like a full office suit. You have Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Spreadsheets, uh, and all of those. And you have unlimited storage on your Google Drive when you get Google Suit. And uh, that's 10 US dollars per user per month. Unfortunately, it's only like the minimum amount of users is three. But with 30 US dollars per month, you get unlimited storage and all these features. The only downside is that the desktop app, actually there's two of now, two desktop apps for Google Drive, they are like non-functional at best. But for that, we have uh, replaced our Google Drive desktop app with the free file sync uh, software, which is an open source, so it's free and it's a, uh, like it's actively developed. This software is a feature rich uh, software and it's constantly being updated. So it means that there's almost no bugs at all. At least I haven't uh, encountered any, any major bugs. So we use this and it's really versatile. There's a bit of a learning curve, but uh, after you learn it, it's very easy to use. So our system is now Google Drive with free file sync. And in this video, I just wanted to go through these options so you can kind of find the one that you like. And if you're just like us, I would recommend this Google Drive Plus free file sync as your system. Uh, but I'm actually interested to hear what systems do you use? So please comment below what systems do you use and what, what kind of problems you have? Because I don't know everything about this topic, but uh, there might be some like total uh, black horse somewhere there that you have never heard of that is perfect for this. So please tell me in the comments and uh, go ahead and look at the comments as well if you if some people uh, are mentioning some other uh, solutions as well. The next video we're going to talk about the actual workflow for remote editing and you can find the links here. And if you are interested in getting the same system as we use, you can find links below this video. And if you are in need of remote editor on our website, there's a link below as well. You can find a contact form where you can contact us and I can find you some help uh, working on your project as well. So see you in the next video.